To start camper life, I drove 2,800 miles from Washington, D.C. to Washington State in the winter to pick up our hiatus pop-up camper. On the way back to D.C., I took time to visit six national parks and three Utah State Parks. In this series, I will share the planning insights and stories from my trip back home. To find weight allowances, look inside the driver's side door frame. You'll find a sticker that has GVWR or gross vehicle weight rating, which is the maximum weight for the entire vehicle and all its contents. Gross axle weight rating or GAWR for front and back, which is the maximum weight for each of the axles. So for our Honda Ridge line, we were allowed 6,019 pounds for everything. 3,131 pounds for the front axle and 3,219 pounds for the back axle. So now knowing the weight limits, we went ahead and went to a CAT scale and weighed the empty truck and found that the total car weighed 4,621 pounds, which would give us approximately 1,400 pounds of total weight that we could add. Again, total weight includes weight of the passengers, gasoline, all your equipment, and the camper itself. Basically anything that adds weight to the truck must be included. After adding the camper and adding all the equipment we need to boondock for a long period of time, we reweighed the truck and camper and found that the total weight was 5,480 pounds and that the front and rear axle weights were well within tolerance. When we added passenger weight for the two of us, that added 330 pounds for a total of 5,810 pounds, giving us a fairly slim margin of 200 pounds under gross vehicle weight rating. So when we look at the weight breakout, the truck and gas was about 4,621 pounds, the camper 460 pounds, our equipment and supplies 400 pounds, and then the passengers will be 331 pounds. Again, these are approximates based on uh, several CAT scale weights. So it was important for us to keep our camper weight under the gross vehicle weight rating for a number of reasons, primarily for safety, but also for insurance. Uh, we didn't want to have any challenges from the insurance company if we got into an accident. And we also want to keep the camper on the truck full time. And we want to reduce the wear and tear of having additional weight on the camper. We confirmed our hypothesis that it would be challenging to have a boondock ready vehicle under gross vehicle weight rating. And many of our decisions were based on keeping weight down. And for consideration, 10 gallons of water, for instance, or any liquid weighs 83 pounds. Adding a bike on a bike rack would add, you know, over 100, 120 pounds. So those are just uh, some of the challenges. And we'll go through in later videos of, you know, what we actually will take out with us for now when we camp on a temporary basis and what our plans are for when we full time in the future. That's it. Uh, please like and subscribe the video. We're trying to get to a thousand subscribers so that YouTube will monetize us. Not that important, but any help would be appreciated. And please leave any comments below. Thanks.